Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm bringing you the secret weapon I've discovered for coloring glass objects and making them look like the glass is in front of the stamp that you've colored. I got this idea from Karen Orr. She's a bridal illustrator, and I've been watching her periscopes, and she's amazing in the way that she creates transparency with all these bridal fabrics by using acrylic paint on the top once she's done with her painting she adds white to the top and I thought wait we could do that with our stamps so I tried this recently on a periscope and I posted it on Instagram and it blew up everybody wanted to see more of it and how it's done so what I had done was use the bugs and kisses jar and the little fox from into the woods and stamp them together and today I'm gonna to be showing you ones that I'm making with all the new stamps from Lunfon their recent release with these older containers so this jar is older and all I had to do was mask out the little oval at the bottom of the jar on the inside so that I could make it look like there's sand in there and colored all the images. I'm not going to show you all the coloring because this is really about adding the white on top. And I'm using this white gesso from Ranger and it's you can use all different kinds of white paints, white acrylics, Copic opaque. You just want to make sure that you're able to kind of wet it down a little bit and water it down because if it's really thick, you're going to end up with a big white highlight on something rather than a soft, glassy look. So I'm taking a flat quarter inch brush from the Silver Brush Company, and I'm going to make some strips of white over top of the finished image. Now this is not for the faint at heart. A lot of folks would stress over putting white paint over top of an image they just spent a lot of time coloring. And I spent a lot of time creating the background color in this, the blues and the purples in there to make it look like glass. And I actually was a little nervous as I was doing these, thinking what happens if I screw this up? And I've wasted all of my time coloring and then do the white on top and make a mess of it. So here was where I tried a very damp, uh, just barely damp, shall I say, baby wipe to wipe off some of the paint in an area that I had messed up and it worked pretty well. I didn't want something soaking wet, so I just did something a little bit damp so that I could wipe off some of that paint. It's not gonna work if you let it dry too long, so you wanna catch it pretty quickly. And then when you go over the image, my recommendation would be not to cover the face heavily. So you want the face to be able to peek out and be seen enough that it actually works. And um, so there's that finished one. And then I decided to look through my collection to see what else I had for glass images. And this is a gumball in which I stamped the, the whole gumball onto some post-it tape. I trimmed out the gumballs and then stamped it so that I only was stamping the outside. And then I had room on the inside to put one of these images from the Mom and Me set, the little owls. And I covered, colored the rest so it looked like it was made of wood, so it kind of fits the entire... Um, the whole feel of the little woodsy stamps. And then I added the yellow tape to block everything off so I wouldn't get any white paint. And I did rub the tape on my sleeve so that I would take off some of the sticky. And then round shapes are going to have round highlights. You do need to have some color inside of the glass. So if you have no color in there, you're painting white on white and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it, it helps to have some color in there so that it actually looks like transparent glass. So I'm just kind of playing around with what's going to look good and, and what's going to look like they're behind glass. It got a little bit heavy there, but I knew that I could adjust that a little bit using a baby wipe so I didn't panic and just kept trying to figure out, okay, what, what are these swirls going to look like? And then I grabbed that baby wipe so I could just kind of wipe off some of it because I, I got a little bit too thick there and I wanted it to just be a little bit more transparent. You can dab or wipe just be real careful not not to go a different direction than what your brush strokes go so you want any places that you remove to be removed in the same direction the same pattern of strokes and then i also decided to paint around the outside edges and take that black line and knock it back to a grayish white so that it looks like it's it's almost a lighter color than the stamp line around the rest of the image so that it really lightened it and made it look like that outside part is glass and doesn't have a black line around it. 
So that's that one. And then I decided to get out Fantastic Friends because there's two wonderful little images. I'm going to use the big one because I wanted to put in there from Lovable Legends, the giant squid. And I thought he would be kind of fun in there, but I had to make this bigger because he wasn't going to fit. So I stamped first the top and then I stamped the bottom and I had drawn a pencil line so I knew exactly where to line the bottom up and created a giant tall fish tank out of this one. So I basically just stretched the whole thing so that it would be taller enough to fit that. And then I put all the little fishy friends in there. This is probably more of a baby fit squid than a giant squid because he would have to fit into a fish tank with all these little baby fishies. But I think it still works because he's still adorable. So now I'm going to take my one inch flat wash brush and go across this. Now when you're using a large brush like this, depending on how pliable it is, you may have to manage, and that's what I'm doing right now, managing how wet the brush is, because if it starts to dry out too much, it'll feel kind of stiff, and you don't want it to feel stiff. You want it to feel good and soft and pliable. And so you may need to go back and forth a little bit and dab off some water, add in water, so just so that you get a really soft brush line going onto your paper. And not real thick with paint, but with just the, the paint on the tip of the brush, and brush it across there. And you can also then switch back to the smaller brush. So I got out the quarter inch brush and I'm going to add some more specific, more controlled lines because here I can actually make them exactly where I want them in smaller strips and make more direct reflections. And again, I'm avoiding painting straight over my giant squid's face because he's the most important thing to me in this image. If the little castle at the bottom was most important to you, then you would make sure that there were no highlights across that portion. And you know, so whatever's most important to you, then leave that uh, being the, the part that's not covered by any of the white. You don't want to cover the whole thing unless you want it to look like frosted glass, but that would be an interesting look for perhaps a winter card looking out a window and just do a very light frosted glass over top of an image it would be really beautiful. But doesn't that look like real glass? Like they're all behind the glass. Oh, oh my gosh, this is just so much fun. I was having a blast looking at all the glass objects in Lawn Fawn stamp sets. And that brought me to this one. This is a snow globe. And I wanted to use this new set, which is uh, Ready Set Snow is the globe and Ready Set Shake has these sentiments. So you can have more than Christmas sentiments to go with this. And if you've got the Christmas set, you might want to pick up that year-round one to make this one useful all year long. And I wanted to use the fairies. Aren't they sweet? There's fairies, there's a little house, there's little flowers, a whole lot of stuff. And I stretched this stamp the same way as I had done with the fish tank. I stamped the top portion, I stamped the bottom portion, and connected them with lines. So it worked pretty well to add all of these images in there because I wanted it to be taller. This reminds me more of one of those glass little things my grandma used to have when I was a kid and she would have little dolls under them and stuff so that we wouldn't touch them and they wouldn't get dusty and all that. So um, that's more of what this reminds me of or some kind of terrarium with the little fairies scene in it. So I'm taking my wide brush and I'm just gonna go around the two sides a little bit and then a little little wash, a little curve around the top side, and then switch to the smaller brush so I can make some more controlled marks and some really specific highlights. And on the, the sides, it's going to be straight lines, and around the top, it's going to just go around the curve of the object. So if you're doing this on a different kind of vase or any other kind of jar, just follow the shape of the jar itself, and usually that will show you where the highlight is. And here's this one in real life so you can see how big it is compared to my hand. So I did make it quite large to accommodate all those images. So here is the finished one. All of them are going to be pinnable on my blog so that you can see before and after the white paint and you can pin those. Whichever one is most pinned I will do a tutorial of in the coming weeks in a video. So if you want to go and pin your favorite one so that I can tell which one you guys want to see how to do the highlighting and stuff on that glass. And we can do the, the highlighting before and after the white paint. So check out my blog in the link in the doobly-doo. There's a couple more videos. 
hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.